Thanks to those who are joining us today and those who may be watching the video of today's session. We'll get started here in a minute. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Region 8 Comprehens Comprehensive Center's Getting Ready for Summer Virtual Learning Series. I'm Elizabeth Eaton with the Region 8 CC, and I am thrilled to be here for our first session focused on setting up for summer success. I cannot wait to work with all of you to make this summer the best yet. I'm joined by my colleague, Amir Davis, who will introduce himself in a minute. But first, we wanted to welcome you all to the session and take some time for brief introductions here in the chat. So please take a minute um, and introduce yourself in the chat, share your name, your district or organization and your role, and then take a look at the four images that we have here and tell us which one reflects how you are approaching summer 2023 and why. Folks are introducing themselves. Just a, a couple housekeeping items um, while you're making those introductions. Uh, we'd ask that you stay on mute when you're not speaking. We'll have some time throughout our session today for discussion, and we'll invite you to come off mute and ask questions. And of course, feel free to ask questions or share comments in the chat throughout our session today. Um, we have a note catcher for today's session, not to be confused with a dream catcher, but it might capture some of your dreams for your summer learning program. Uh, we'd encourage you to use this as a graphic organizer for your notes and to access resources that we'll refer to throughout our session today. We also will be asking for your input on today's session at the end of our time. So thank you in advance for sharing your feedback. And then one last thing, we are going to be recording today's session to archive it and share it with those who could not join us. All right. Well, let's get started with um, some introduc introductions. Thank you for introducing yourselves in the chat. I'd like to introduce our Region 8 CC team. So as I mentioned, I'm Elizabeth Eaton, a technical assistant specialist with the Region 8 Compre Comprehensive Center, or Region 8 CC. And most recently, I've been working with our wonderful and dedicated team in Ohio as they are implementing the state's whole child framework and supporting a whole child approach to education. I am joined by my colleague, Amir Davis. Amir, would you like to take a minute to introduce yourself? Thanks, Elizabeth. Yes, Amir Davis. I'm IM2, a technical assistant specialist with Region 8 CC, uh, a former school leader, teacher, district administrator. And I hope to bring that work to um, give insights and stories of triumph and failure to guide you all into the planning the best summer that you can. Okay. Thanks, Amir. Now I'm going to provide a little bit of information about the Region 8 CC before we dive into our session today. So the Region 8 Comprehensive Center, Region 8 CC, is one of 19 regional CCs in the CC network um, that provides high quality, intensive capacity building technical assistance to clients from state, regional and local educational agencies and schools in Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. So we serve clients by helping to identify, implement, and sustain effective evidence-based programs, practices, and interventions that support improved educator and student outcomes. We help agency staff improve educational outcomes for all students, work on closing achievement gaps, and improve the quality of instruction. As a federally funded comprehensive center, all of our work is conducted free of any charge, including the coaching support around summer learning that is available through this series. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that as we go on today. 
Um, so now that we know a little bit more about each other and about the Region 8 CC, um, let's talk about why we're here today and learn more about what we have planned for the Getting Ready for Summer series. So Amir, I'm gonna turn it over to you. So here, here's our sessions um, that we have planned for this series. And you can take a look at this on your handout, whether you're joining us live or as a recording. So today's session is called Setting Up for Summer Success. And we'll dive more deeply into the specific agenda in just a moment, but you can read that summary in that first section there. In session two, we'll focus on student recruitment as you'll work to develop and refine your recruitment messages to fit the needs and interests of your students. If you join us for session three, we'll learn strategies, including logistics, to create warm and welcoming environments for your student learning programs. And in our final session, I'm sad about that, uh, we'll focus on structures, practices, and curricula to accelerate grade level learning during the summer program. Here's a, today's agenda. First thing, um, oh, you'll see this also, this lined up on your handout as well. But the first thing that we'll do is we'll review and discuss research in support of using summer programming to aid the learning recovery, including accelerated learning. Next, we'll take time to reflect on previous summer, previous summer programming and other data and then lastly, we'll craft and refine a plan for identifying and understanding the summertime learning needs and priorities of the students and families in your community. So next we'll walk, uh, Elizabeth will walk us through the importance of having summer programs as a strategy to address unfinished learning. Thank you, Mayor. All right, so as Amir mentioned we wanted to start off our conversation today discussing the opportunity that is summer and how summer programming can help accelerate learning and help students catch up on unfinished learning following the COVID-19 pandemic. So there are so many reasons why summer and out of school time is important to youth. Many of these reasons are difficult to quantify, um, but we've listed a few here, including providing a safe environment, meaning, maintaining strong relationships and connections with peers and adults, um, and offering learning opportunities that can expand horizons, as well as allow for learning in a different way than in the classroom during the school year. Um, we want to take just a minute to think about the other roles that summer programming can play in your school community. Um, I'm thinking about the role that summer plays in, in my community. It can be childcare for busy working families. It can be an opportunity for kids to have a nutritious meal. Um, so think about the, the role that summer programs and out of school time can play in your community enrichment and explore other opportunities. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing. All right. So the research and evidence tell us and point to tangible whole child benefits to quality summer programs, including academic benefits and um, growth um, around social emotional competencies. With the caveat here that program quality matters and so does attendance. Um, our, our programs can't impact our young people if they are not showing up. Um, so attendance matters. The research also tells us that connections to school year learning are a critical aspect of quality for summer programming and increasingly important as many districts employ summer learning and after school programming as part of broader initiatives to address the increased academic needs following the COVID-19 pandemic. So some things to consider from the research, and we're gonna dive into some of these things um, here in just a minute. Um, but this includes close collaboration and coordination among all adults working with children, including our community partners, 
incorporating time for academics and enrichment activities, providing professional development for a well-trained and dedicated summer staff, ensuring sufficient time on task, and supporting strong attendance. So we'll talk a little bit more about what the research tells us are essential elements of summer programming. But first, let's talk about the impact of the pandemic on student learning needs. So we know that the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted the education of students in our region, in Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio, as well as students across the nation. We know that unfinished learning has affected students' academic performance, especially in math. Um, we also know that unfinished learning disproportionately affects students from historically disadvantaged backgrounds, including students of color, students in special education, and English learners. Just want us to take a minute to reflect and think about um, how the results that we're seeing compare to what's happening in your district with lear your learners. Feel free to share your comments here in the chat. And while we do that, I also want to highlight a resource from the Department of Education's Regional Educational Laboratory Network, um, the Toolkit for Assessing Learning Changes After Spring 2020 COVID-19 School Closures can help districts identify where learning changes might have occurred following the pandemic and better understand how to use that knowledge to inform decision making. We'll drop a link to this resource in the chat here just so that you have it. And thanks so much for sharing your reflections. All right. So we know that learning changed during and after the pandemic. Um, these are some of the headlines that we saw at the height of the pandemic. Um, and we just wanna take a minute to think about how did student learning change in your district, school or community during and after the pandemic? What's your headline? Feel free to share that here in the chat. One of the headlines for me coming out of the pandemic is that there's a path to address unfinished learning. And part of that path includes summer programming and summer programs. Thanks so much for sharing your headlines with us. All right. So now we know from the research and from uh, classroom wisdom that summer is an opportunity to help students catch up on unfinished learning. Uh, we're going to walk through what the research says about the characteristics of effective summer programs, and then I'm going to turn it over to Amir for the fun stuff, um, to guide us through some activities to reflect on past summer programming and better understand the learning needs of our school community to help make this year the best summer yet. All right. So... The, the elements of essential or the essential elements of summer programs and planning that you see outlined here uh, were identified through a longitudinal study conducted by RAND. You'll see the, the source material there if you're interested in, le in learning more. Um, but during the summers of 2011 through 2014, Researchers from the RAND Corporation collected more than 1,200 surveys of summer instructors and 10,000 sur surveys of elementary grade students. They conducted 900 interviews, observed more than 2,000 hours of classroom and enrichment activities. And this resulted in the elements that you see here, uh, which include planning, teacher selection and professional development, time on task, student recruitment, um, academic curriculum and enrichment activities, positive summer climate, and summer cost and funding. So we're going to focus on recommendations from the research around four of these elements um, that we're going to be exploring through our Getting Ready for Summer series. And that includes planning, student recruitment, positive summer climate, and academics and enrichment. And as we go through, feel free to drop any questions that you might have, um, comments or reflections here in the chat for us to, to consider together. All right, so what does the research say about conditions for successful planning? Start early. Um, summer begins in September, as the saying goes. Um, research from RAND suggests that beginning regular planning meetings in the fall and meeting at least monthly uh, is helpful for successful planning of summer programs. Hire or identify a summer program lead 
with authority to lead program planning and engage and manage members of the leadership team. Build a central office leadership team, and this would include representation from key departments like curriculum and instruction, um, human resources, facilities, nutrition. Um, beginning in late winter and early spring, engage site level leaders, um, including principals in planning meetings for summer programming and identify a process for meeting regularly during the summer to monitor program implementation and address program-wide and site-level needs. The Wallace Foundation Summer Learning Toolkit is a really helpful tool um, for planning. We're going to be using a few of the great resources including in the toolkit later today, and we'll drop a link to the toolkit in uh, the chat, and it's also included in your note catcher for today's session. All right, so now turning to strategies for effective student recruitment. RAND researchers also identified um, strategies to support recruitment. And these strategies included developing recruitment materials that accurately explain both the program requirements and the attractive features of the program. Communicating with families and students several times before the program starts personalizing recruitment of students and their families. So the most effective recruitment processes observed by RAND researchers um, paired recruitment materials with a personalized recruitment, um, such as a letter from teachers to students encouraging them to participate. And then establishing a firm enrollment deadline. Our second session in the Getting Ready for Summer series, which will be held at the same time next Tuesday, will focus on student recruitment. So more information about this important piece of summer programming to come. Positive site climate drives the student experience. Um, and the research find that, finds that it's directly correlated with higher student attendance rates. So the quality of staff to student interactions was the item most strongly and consistently related to whether students appear to enjoy the day. So to promote a coherent culture, programs can develop an explicit message about their program values and how students are to be treated and train staff on both. So researcher, researchers found that staff using similar words and concepts and engaging with students in similar and often positive ways was one sign of a coherent site culture. For, for example, staff might tell students in our program, we are about treating each other with kindness. Um, we will dive deeper into strategies for building a positive uh, summer climate in our third session of the Getting Ready for Summer series. And then finally, in terms of academics and enrichment, some. Good practices um, characterize the most well-organized and engaging activities observed in the districts in the study. Curricula used were coherent, comprehensive, and aligned with or extended the school year curriculum. Districts also differentiated activities within lesson plans, uh, particularly for independent practice, um, and this helps support students' different learning needs. The research also suggests capping class size at 15 students if per adult, if possible. Um, the smaller class sizes allow teachers to get to know students, establish norms, and launch instruction on a compressed summer schedule. And then all districts in the study featured fun and engaging enrichment activities like arts, sports, and science exploration. Enrichment activities that were pre-planned and sequenced were more successful, um, allowing the majority of students to actively participate for the duration of the activity. We will talk more about um, academics and enrichment activities, including strategies for accelerating student learning through summer programming in our fourth and final session of the Getting Ready for Summer series. So I'm gonna pause there um, and see if there are any questions or reflections from this overview of the research, anything that surprised you, anything that you might add from your experiences. So I'd encourage you to share your ideas, questions, comments, and reflections in the chat. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna turn it over to Amir to kick off our activities around developing and refining your plan to make this summer the best yet. Amir?
Amir, we might be having some trouble hearing you. Oh, there, there. Can you hear me now? Yes. I can hear you now. I apologize. <laughs> I was so excited about the framing that you provided and, um, and to present this next session. So we will learn about the summer reflection tool and spend time using it to, re to revisit the successes and areas of growth from past summer learning programs. So the summer program reflection tool, and you can find this in your handout, but there's some, some background behind it. It was created by the Bellwether Education Partners to provide districts and cities with a semi-structural guide to reflect on a recently completed summer program and begin planning for their upcoming summer with a focus on continuous program improvement. It contains some prompts, and you'll see this once we get there, for reflection on what went well, for uh, what went well and what could be improved, and a variety of categories related to program planning and management, instruction, and student outcomes. It also encourages program leaders to incorporate key data sources. The RAND Foundation to expand on the Bellwether for Education Partners work found that districts that use key continuous improvement data and recommendations to make program changes each year realize substantial improvement to the effectiveness of their program. And the most influential information for continuous improvement included no show rates, it included attendance, lost instructional time, instructional practices in, in academics and enrichment, and site climate. Rand also found that measuring the quality of these program components required the right data sources and thoughtful planning before the program begins. So from that research, we, well, they developed the summer program reflection tool, and here it is. So as I said, it contains prompts to reflect on what went well, what can be approved, and a variety of categories, including program planning management, instruction, systems, partners. The tool also encourages leaders to incorporate key data sources to inform decisions and considerations for next summer. Throughout this session, and the following sessions, we'll use this tool as a launching pad for planning the summer program. All right, so for the next 10 minutes, I want you to choose your path. Whether you are joining us live or watching a recording, um, I want you to, if you're watching a recording, I want you to pause this video once we introduce this activity and kind of spend some time working on this, this, uh, this next thing here. So you're going to choose your path. Now we all have different starting points, and we are, but we are aiming to have an impactful summer as our finish line. So path one is for folk who are just starting the summer program planning process, or you're somewhere in the middle. So you're not quite ready to reflect on the, using the past summer program reflection tool. Um, so you're going to create your plan for using the tool by answering these three questions here. So what's your plan to use the tool? Who will you engage with completing the reflection tool? And then what are you curious about? What lingering questions do you have after reflecting on the past summer learning? For folks who are further along in the planning process, you would take path two. And as we call it, the we got this. Um, if you take this path, you will jump right in and simply complete the program planning and management section of your summer program reflection tool that can be found in the, the handout. So again, if you're joining us in a recording, just pause the video for about 10 minutes and complete your path. So now that we've uh, kind of planned our path for reflecting on past summer successes and areas of growth, now it's time to um, discuss the importance of assessing the needs of your school community as it relates to your summer learning program. 
In this session, we will also learn the steps of con uh, conducting a community needs assessment. We'll reflect on past experiences with accessing our community needs and, and exchange ideas. And if we have time, we'll begin to craft and refine our plan for assessing the needs of our school community as it relates to our summer program. What is a needs assessment? And why is it important for the planning of summer program? A community needs assessment helps us better understand the issues faced by our school community. Specifically in a community, in a community needs assessment process, we work to identify, analyze, and prioritize the needs of our population you've decided to target for your summer learning program. So in other words, you are identifying, analyzing, prioritizing the needs that your target population express to you rather than you determining what you think their needs are. To determine their needs, you collect data from community members to understand their aspirations and their priorities as it relates to the summer program. So why do, why do this? Why is it tons of work? Why do we assess the community needs prior to planning? Well, simply, um, we use these rich insights to guide future actions. So whether you're refining your recruitment plan or engaging your target audience for the first time, a needs assessment is a great way to address the priorities that your community elevates to you. In next session here, uh, this is where we begin to kind of generate some ideas and engage, uh, I'm sorry, ex ex exchange some ideas. So what I want us to do is access this, Jam this Jamboard link. If you're joining us as a recording, it will be on your handout and resources. This first question I want us to answer here is, um, what students are you targeting for summer accelerated learning? What steps are you taking to assess your community? This next question, what needs are you assessing? How will you assess the needs of your community? Will it be a survey? Will you do interviews? Will you do focus groups? This last section, or question rather, how will you use what you learned? I want to pause here. We're not going to go into the Jamboard just yet. We're actually going to, in just a few moments, watch a short clip that provides some resources or a strategy for us to use as we're assessing our community needs. But I want us to keep these questions in mind as we're watching this clip. Ramp was... You see what's wrong with the ramp? Not sure. Oh, now I see it. That is why a needs assessment is important. If we don't do it, this could happen. But if done right, the community, people expressing the problem, and you will get a successful project. What exactly is a needs assessment? A needs assessment is a systematic process for determining and addressing needs or gaps between current conditions and desired conditions or wants. The discrepancy between the current condition and the wanted condition must be measured to appropriately identify the need. I see, but why do we conduct it? We need to conduct a needs assessment to identify the root problem, develop real, practical solutions based on identified root problems, and then measure the impact of the project. So, when should I identify the need? Great question. There are three situations where this can be done. The first situation is during project planning. The second instance is when implementing the initiative. And the third would be when measuring the impact of the project. Bear in mind that these are to be done throughout the project. Hmm, why is needs assessment important? 
Needs assessments are important because it helps us to avoid duplications with existing programs which are already successful and also to ensure the relevance of the needs for the target audience. That sounds great! Okay, let me do it. Oh wait, how do I do it? Now, there are four steps in conducting a needs assessment. Here's an overview of the steps. Let's try applying it to your task. Step 1. Plan the needs assessment. You need to determine its purpose, formulate questions, and determine the data source. Okay, I'll start a needs assessment for the differently abled students. I'll start by planning it. Hmm, the purpose would be to make it easier for them to move around. As for the data source, it would be great to get the data required from the differently abled students themselves. Some of the questions I will ask are, are there any routes that are usually difficult for them to access? How can we make it easier for them to get around? Good start! Now step 2. Collect and analyze information. There are primary information such as interviews, stories and focus groups and also secondary information which are obtained from documents and literature. Next, I'll collect information. I could conduct interviews with John and the others to hear their stories and difficulties that they face. Great job, Ben! Now step 3. Interpret the data. Then, I will move on to interpret the data. I can use this information that I've gathered and look for patterns to determine the issue. Final step. Step 4. Document the findings. This could be in the form of a slide deck, a full report or an executive summary. I'll write all that I've discovered and have them compiled in relevant categories so that their needs can be identified along the way. Alright, done! Perfect! Good job, Ben! Great! Now you can start creating a proper ramp that will really benefit people like John. So, National University of uh, Singapore for the resources. I really appreciate that. So remember, um, with our needs assessments, we are identifying uh, and analyzing any barriers, aspirations, any priorities. And we do this because we have to keep in mind that parents have choices about what their, what their children, children will, do, will be doing during the summer, including staying at home. So you'll be much more likely to create an effective messaging around recruitment or design your plan if you put some time in understanding what your summer audience thinks about the summer, summer learning, and your summer learning program as a whole. So you'll have to make decisions about how, how and when to do it uh, and who in your district will oversee and do the research, but it's worth the effort. So remember those questions I had for our Jamboard? We're going to revisit them again. So you're well equipped to answer them now. Um, just as a reminder, they were, what are your students? What students are you targeting for the summer accelerated learning? And what steps will we be taking to assess your community needs? What needs are you assessing? How will you assess the needs of your community? Will it be a survey, focus group, interviews, knocking on their doors? How will you use um, what you learned? If you're joining us for a recording, I would advise you to pause this for five to six minutes and answer these four prompts here. If you're joining us live, you will meet us on a Jamboard discussion. So what's next? Uh, we are optimistic, optimistically planning into our summer. I know summer is coming is certainly here for where I live right now. It feels like it's extremely hot today. But I want us to think about what you heard and learned today. What is one takeaway you want to try and why? Share that in the chat. And remember, a takeaway can be an idea, a strategy, a tool 
or an action step. Elizabeth will give us insight into what uh, was to come as we're looking ahead. Thanks, Amir. Those activities were fun. And now I am feeling optimistic as uh, we continue with our summer planning. All right, so three quick things um, to look ahead at what's next. As we close out today, we'd love um, for you to take a minute and share your feedback about today's session, what worked, what can be improved. Um, I truly believe that that feedback is a gift. So thank you for sharing your feedback with us and helping to inform and guide future sessions in this series. Speaking of future sessions, be sure to register for next week's session um, where we will talk about student and family recruitment. We'll drop the registration link here in the chat. The session will be held next Tuesday, April 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then finally, our Region 8 CC team is offering free coaching to support your efforts in preparing for summer. So if you're interested in receiving coaching support, which could involve a phone call or two or maybe something more, please feel free to reach out to Amir directly. We'll add his contact information here in the chat as well. Again, this is an optional opportunity uh, to receive more targeted support to help you get ready for summer and at no cost to your school or district. I'll pause to see if we have any comments or reflections before we end today. Great. Well, I have to share a big thank you to my colleague Amir and a thank you to all of you for your time today and for the work that you do each and every day to support the learners in your community and across our region. I look forward to next week's session and working together to make this summer a summer to remember. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you.